Hi everyone, welcome to another screen scraping video. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how you can use PhantomJS uh, specifically to help us with three scenarios um, that can be a little tricky when you are trying to screen scrape. Uh, so we'll take a look at three uh, demos in a moment. But uh, first off, if you have not come across PhantomJS before, uh, essentially it's what's referred to as a headless node. Um, the general idea being that um, PhantomJS is basically uh, a browser but uh, instead of having a UI you control all the interactions using JavaScript so think of it uh, if you will that you can emulate if you will or simulate um, all the various interactions that a user has on a website like say for example opening a URL uh, clicking on a button filling a form uh, or navigating and scrolling through a page <coughs> All these are functionalities that you can uh, do from uh, within PhantomJS using JavaScript. So that in a nutshell is, um, uh, is PhantomJS and uh, specifically in today's uh, uh, tutorial and demo, we'll take a look at three scenarios. Now if you're wondering why use PhantomJS as opposed to any other web scraping tool, um, I found PhantomJS uh, to be helpful really in uh, two broad scenarios. So scenario one is uh, when the website or app, web app is really using a lot of uh, client-side JavaScript using Ajax techniques. It could be um, using very many of these uh, client-side frameworks uh, like AngularJS, for example, or any of the modern client-side frameworks. And it can be a little tricky to extract that uh, server-side uh, scraping solution. The other scenario I found PhantomJS to be particularly helpful is um, uh, when, uh, when you have sites that are aware of web scraping frameworks. Uh, so it tends to be a lot more trickier when you're using other um, scraping frameworks. Um, whereas with PhantomJS I found a lot more success and it was uh, relatively easy to get started. So in the demo today, I'm going to showcase uh, three common scenarios that uh, you will most likely want to consider using PhantomJS for screen scraping. So keep in mind PhantomJS more than screen scraping, it's uh, more commonly used as a web automation framework uh, and a web testing tool. But uh, again, um, the strength of PhantomJS uh, extends towards uh, giving us the ability to do screen scraping. So uh, we'll take a look at three scenarios. So that's on uh, you know, generic kind of like screen scraping and how do we extract uh, page content. Uh, we'll take a look at some scenarios where we may want to add a timer delay, uh, particularly for uh, uh, you know, AngularJS or client side uh, kind of like scripted kind of like scenarios. And then finally, we'll take a look at how we can extract some structured page content and uh, store that into a file. So those are the three scenarios. So let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to uh, my my dev environment, and here what I have. Um, so I've downloaded uh, Phantom JS in advance, um, so it's uh, set up on my machine. Um, this video itself doesn't cover installation, but hopefully that's uh, a breeze to go through, so you can download the latest version and get started. Um, so I'm going to use uh, Sublime as my text editor and we'll go through some simple examples. So this uh, starting off with a really simple 101 uh, level if you will. Um, so here's the basic syntax. So this is how you instantiate uh, the page object. Um, so basically create uh, an instance of a web page uh, and then uh, provide the URL that you want to uh, screen scrape or extract. And uh, basically this is uh, where the crux of uh, your logic resides and uh, at the very end um, you can exit uh, Phantom. So that's a really simple code here. So again uh, in this particular example or the first example we'll just uh, open example.org. So I'll just open that right here. Seems to be taking a little longer. Okay. Um, so here, as you can see, the site's really simple and it's a good place for us to get started. Um, so we'll open the website and uh, we'll check if uh, what the status is, whether it's success or fail. 
and uh, if it's a uh, success uh, we would uh, like to screen grab this that's basically convert whatever page we are looking at uh, into an image and also write the output of the page contents into uh, text file so uh, let's head over to a console and um, assuming ev and your um, phantom js is all set up and it's added to your path so phantom js and uh, the name of the file was test1 so let's just quickly run that so there you go um, so here we can see that uh, we have displayed the status um, it's success and because it's a uh, status is success uh, we are printing the content on the console as you can see it's um, very much um, you know, JavaScript based so familiarity and know-how of JavaScript uh, the language and uh, the underlying constructs is quite helpful to know um, so that was a simple example we've um, printed uh, the contents of uh, the page uh, on the console and additionally we've uh, also created a screenshot uh, so this is the screen grab and uh, one of the questions you might be asking is hey uh, when we um, uh, opened the page it looks a lot bigger but uh, the screen grab seems to be much smaller that's uh, because we haven't yet set the resolution of uh, uh, within uh, our a page initialization so it assumed the default settings uh, but that was a really easy step for us to um, uh, extract the content of the page so we have both an image of what the page looks like uh, from uh, within the eyes of uh, phantom js if you will this is what the page looks like or what um, the end website detected and sent back uh, based on uh, the page settings so let's try something else now so let's uh, let's use another site here so let's uh, use detect my browser uh, and if you try opening uh, this URL from different browsers as you, you can expect it uh, it detects what your browser settings are including what uh, browser you're using what resolution you're using and uh, various others including what uh, uh, what is the uh, compatibility of course different plugins HTML5 and various other browser specific settings uh, so now if we try to open this page here so instead of uh, this example let's uh, let's uh, use detect my browser and just so that we, uh, we avoid all the noise I'm going to comment printing it to the console and let's try that again Right, so success so let's open the file again and uh, here if we zoom in here we can see that uh, it's not able to detect uh, which um, version or which um, I'm sorry which browser it is uh, because we are using uh, web toolkit it defaulted and recognized Safari but as you can see it's not uh, detected um, anything else uh, because we haven't provided any parameters or set any uh, page um, level settings so let's do that now um, so if I go back here and uh, pre-type this and I'll just paste that here and explain the code um, so here what we are doing is we are setting um, uh, the user agent string so that gives uh, the website uh, context as to what uh, what browser we are using so this gives us the opportunity to emulate uh, different browser settings uh, and also we have um, uh, pre-selected uh, screen resolution um, so now let's uh, run the script again and if you look at uh, the image So here we have now got more success so now because the user agent uh, we have set it as Chrome and provided a resolution it's able to pick up um, uh, the, uh, the parameters that we have provided so again we have to specify the user agent string and uh, screen resolution so I'll, I'll come back to why there's a, a difference in this resolution in a different video but uh, again this is uh, just a quick getting started video 
but in essence it allows us to uh, emulate if you will um, different browsers and that's quite handy because some websites when you're trying to scrape it uh, not only look for the presence of user agents and viewport but also or, or screen resolution but also it uh, uh, it um, uh, all uh, checks for various other plugins uh, so uh, it uh, detects whether you have various plugins installed otherwise uh, website uh, kind of um, determines if uh, that you are using a screen scraper and not uh, you know there's no actual user behind it uh, okay so moving on to some of the other examples so the next uh, scenario that we wanted to take a look at was um, uh, what if we, have, uh, we wanted to add a delay so assume you you went to a web page and uh, the web page had some page loading which was controlled through um, some kind of client side scripting it could be jquery or any other ajax library and uh, say for example it took a while for the page to actually load content uh, so this happens uh, a lot within websites that do search like functions so uh, the search itself takes a while for the content to load so i'm just uh, emulating a google like um, a scenario uh, again google's a very poor choice in this demo uh, because it's a uh, it handles uh, quite different from many of the other uh, sites but just as a quick example uh, here you can see that um, it's it's the same boilerplate code uh, uh, so if uh, if the status of um, um, the call is uh, not success uh, then we are halting execution else what we are doing is we are basically adding a timer um, and this timer you can set it based on the website that you are trying to extract uh, so if I run this example now test two. Right, so there's a bit of a delay it allows for the page to load so in essence what I am doing is I am actually um, opening a search uh, image and using the phantom as an example of a keyword and uh, basically uh, as you can imagine it takes a while for all the images to load now keep in mind this as I mentioned um, uh, the Google uh, search for uh, image search is not necessarily the best choice in this example because it uses a, we need to use a combination of scroll uh, for the images to detect and not just a timer uh, as you can imagine all uh, websites tend to optimize uh, how they load content but as a, a really simple example we can see um, uh, how we can extract content uh, from sites that uh, require a delay so this is a really simple but uh, quick and easy way to work around those uh, type of websites so Looking at example two, and again, um, as I mentioned, Google Images is not necessarily the best choice here. Uh, but um, as you can see, it uh, allows for us to add in a quick delay uh, if uh, if the website that you're targeting, uh, if delays are easier mechanism, then that's fine. If not, uh, you can actually uh, emulate uh, users scrolling through the page. So that's another option. Then finally going to the last um, demo and example, um, so here um, this is a case where we want to extract some structured uh, content uh, and uh, store that information uh, within a file. You may remember in the first example we just uh, printed that entire um, web text or the content of the page but here what if we want to extract some structured uh, content. Uh, and uh, we are going to store that information onto the file, uh, local file. So here uh, we need to add FS or file system. Most of the code here stays as is. Um, this is a quick helper. So sometimes uh, when you are testing with your own website or if uh, the target website displays something on the console, so you can tap into that event. So that's a browser console. Um, so you can tap that event. So that's just a quick. Uh, Tip. And uh, for our demo, uh, we are going to take a look at uh, just a, a, you know, a sample site here. So um, here on this particular web page, uh, we would like to extract maybe this content, this blob of text here, um, just uh, so that it's easier to understand the page. I'm using the selector gadget tool to highlight um, the the area and 
uh, as you can see what we are interested in is uh, retrieving this um, CSS uh, base selector so pull line so that's already in the code there and uh, what we are doing is we are extracting that page just uh, if we needed to and uh, the content of uh, the page that's using this uh, CSS selector we are storing that um, and uh, writing it uh, into a file here so that's uh, output3.xml and again I've, I've just added a delay uh, not that this page needs a delay but uh, again if you are trying to extract content um, that's this page for example and then store that um, uh, into a file so again I've added a, um, a timer here but you don't have to so let's run this code um, so let's test 3 alright so let's take a look at the output file um, so again we've we have got that image, um, oops. so we have extracted that page content and uh, the output file, let me just put that here. So here you can see that this is the actual uh, content of the page, so again we have extracted all the, uh, the, the structured content that uh, we were interested in. Uh, into a local uh, XML file. So that's a quick um, a couple of uh, demos to help you get started uh, scraping pages uh, using PhantomJS. Thanks everyone for watching.